Hey, welcome to Training Minutes. Today we're gonna to work on metal basement hatchway doors. We're gonna talk about forcible entry of these doors utilizing a circular saw. No matter where the fire is in the basement, these basement doors have to be opened, whether for fire attack or for ventilation. They have to be opened as a matter of routine operation. Forcing hatchway doors with a halligan and simply frying them, it's the equivalent of forcing the hood on a car. It can make you look real foolish. So we came up with this one method to use the saw. This prop here is very simple. As you can see here, we have just two pieces of flat stock of steel welded on top of each other, and it just makes a track. What this allows is it allows the drill to continue and run smoothly when you're in a recruit class or a company drill. There's also a piece of rebar inside here. That's the same diameter of the locking rod. As with any forcible entry type scenario, the first thing is size up. Is this how the door is locked? So when we cam come up to the door, we're gonna pull on the handle, we're gonna make sure that that's the way the door is locked. As a reference point, we're gonna use a halligan bar. Put the halligan bar at the bottom of the door, and what we're gonna do is start a kerf cut, just the width of the blade, about 12 inches above. Now in real life, when you're cutting, once you hit the rod, and you're listening to the saw, you'll hear it go, the door can just open up and you can stop your cut. But here, we're gonna to continue to cut down. It gives the firefighter practice using the metal cutting blade. Realism in training is, is where it's at in the fire service. Talking at the kitchen table is one thing, actually touching the tools is another. All departments should be training like this. Remember, when utilizing the saw, we're gonna, we got a metal blade, we're gonna start off at a low RPM, and then we're gonna to listen to the saw, and as we get a groove, then we're gonna increase the RPM on the saw. Where we would, we're going full RPM and burying the saw into the product. Another point is the circle of danger, which could rapidly turn into the circle of death. No one should be around the person operating the saw except the guide person that is standing behind him and working with him. Everyone else should be standing clear. If I can reach with that saw or any tool and touch you in my circle, you're in my circle of danger. You shouldn't be there. Okay, so we're gonna take it that we already sized up the door. The firefighters are gonna move in. They're gonna start the saw. You'll see that the firefighter in the back is gonna have his hand on the firefighter. Remember, when the saw is running, it's gonna be very difficult to communicate. In the circle of danger, what we do is if this firefighter pulls his hand away, he's gonna immediately stop cutting. That's a great point. The hands on to cut and the hands off not to cut is a great nonverbal system. I've heard departments use one tap, go, two taps, stop, three taps, phone your mother. I mean, these are, uh, it becomes confusing. This is a great way to do it and not be confusing. Remember, this isn't the only way to force a Bilco door. This is usually my plan A. Plan B for us is we usually will take a Halligan bar and go to the house and attack the Bilco door and rip it right off. This is just simply one method. And remember, when we're done making our cuts and we're gonna take the saw and move it, we wanna dead the blade. Deading the blade means to get it to stop from turning. As you saw, it's just the kerf cut, only took a couple seconds to beat this Bilco door. The prop is all ready to be reset. If you notice, the firefighter's stance, 18 to 24 inches apart, he's got good balance. The firefighter, the safety firefighter in the back is also keeping that firefighter's foot out of the plume of sparks because those sparks are superheated and can burn any kind of gear. We'd like to thank Globe for their sponsorship. This has been Training Minutes, be safe.